Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mike Batty. I'm Bachelor Professor of Planning at University College London, uh, and I'm going to talk to you for about 10 minutes uh, about the shape and form of cities uh, and the way recent events are beginning to actually change them. Now, what you can actually see here, the background uh, is a very interesting sketch uh, of the City of London. Uh, you can see just behind me uh, the Royal Exchange, that's the Stock Exchange, the old Stock Exchange, then the Bank of England um, to, to my left, uh, and uh, the uh, Exchange buildings a bit to the right. And just behind my shoulder, uh, you will see um, a tall building, a skyscraper. In fact, in the last 10 years, uh, all of those buildings at the back of the bank, at the back of the exchange, have actually been developed as skyscrapers. This is most unusual because the City of London has a low buildings policy that uh, for many years, uh, indeed for over 100 years, uh, tall buildings have not been allowed to be developed there. But since the, uh, the last recession in 2008-9, um, with money flowing into the city, these, these skyscrapers have been built, a great wall of skyscrapers really behind the bank. This, as I say, is unusual. It's, 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 it's most unlikely. Nobody really ever expected. Just as, for example, uh, the current pandemic that has hit us uh, so badly worldwide was not expected in any sense. Most people, even those close to pandemics, although they could see the impact of the pandemic in some sense, uh, were not able to anticipate that it would, uh, uh, that it would spread in the way it has. Uh, and also, uh, they weren't able to anticipate the impact it would have on cities. Now, of course, the picture you see behind me uh, the sketch of the uh, of the city uh, done about uh, 10 years ago or so. Um, the sketch basically uh, gives an indication of what a world city really looks like with the central bank, the financial quarter and so on. One of the features, in fact, since COVID-19 has actually hit us, is that for the last five months, this city has been the, the City of London, the financial quarter has been empty. About half a million people commute into this area each day uh, to work. That's an enormous number, 500,000, and only 8,000 people actually live in the city in that sense. Um, and of course, consequently, with everybody working from home and a number of people not working at all, basically, during the pandemic, there are very, very few people to be seen on the streets day or night, uh, throughout the throughout the week, indeed throughout the last five months, and they have certainly not returned to work. Now, this is a major issue because a city like London, for example, um, is determined, if you like, by transportation, by the ability to actually bring people uh, rapidly um, and in volume uh, into these uh, into these uh, these office hubs, basically, uh, into these hubs of activity economic activity, which are really at the center of the city or indeed um, in big edge cities around, uh, around the growth of the, uh, of the city region. Uh, so what really is, is going to happen is anybody's guess. We can't invent the future. We couldn't uh, predict the pandemic in some sense. Uh, we can't uh, in, uh, predict what it will be like in some sense in the, next, uh, uh, in the next two or three years. We can't even predict whether there would be a vaccine. And in some senses, uh, the kind of heritage of cities that we've got with these big cores with moving people into the center um, uh, is going to change. It's already changed. For example, one of the kind of key features, the impact of the pandemic, uh, is that um, the impact of the pandemic is having on um, uh, travel, basically, is that large numbers of people now want to walk or bike, uh, basically, to keep away from one another, in a sense, large numbers of people want to take to their cars in this sense so on the one hand we have walking which is very local on the other hand we have um, uh, movement in cars which is uh, uh, very extensive in some sense what we don't have is any predilection for people to actually travel any longer by mass transit by by subway or tube in our particular case by underground in that sense uh, by by railway and most of the people coming into a city like london um, are indeed traveling by uh, public transport of some sort, mass transit in this sense. So what will cities look like if, for example, we have to um, uh, absorb, if you like, social distancing into the urban fabric? Uh, 
in some sense. Already in the city of London, the place behind my shoulder there, essentially, that you can see, um, there's a large number of transport routes which are being changed to uh, pedestrian and bike only, pavements, sidewalks, that is, are being widened in some sense. Uh, all of these things are taking place when the city is essentially empty. It'll be a very different place if we discover a vaccine in the next uh, two, three months. Uh, or the next year, etc. We may never, of course, discover it. Uh, uh, but uh, if we are able to uh, mitigate it in some way by uh, pharmaceutical interventions, uh, then, of course, um, it may well be that this social distancing may still stick in some sense, or it may not. It, it's entirely unpredictable. We can't invent the future. Now, um, I've actually uh, written a little paper on this that you can get access to. Let me just share my screen. Um, and uh, see if we can, see if I can actually bring it up. Okay, yes, I can bring it up here. Okay, you can actually see the the um, uh, the the, uh, the paper that I've written, along with uh, all the other contributors to this, uh, in the city as a classroom international conference. Uh, my paper is called "Distance Density and COVID-19 in the Future of Big Cities," and in it I speculate about all these issues about how distance and density will change if, for example, we cannot revert to the, uh, the way we traveled, uh, the way we moved, basically, the way we interacted uh, prior to the pandemic in this particular context. Now, I know this is rather different uh, in many senses from the other two or three contributions uh, in this particular session, but it gives you some sense uh, of the determinants of what cities are really all about. If we throw things up in the air and we change things radically in terms of how we reflect uh, distance and density and so on, in terms of our location and movement patterns, then everything will change. And we have no idea at the present time what this will actually lead to. Of course, the impact on the economy is really quite substantial too. Let me stop sharing my screen and go back to the, uh, go back to the, uh, uh, to the, um, uh, to the video here, basically, in some sense. Um, okay, uh, let me, um, in fact, I'm going to share my screen again, basically. I'm going to make some points to actually finish uh, in this sense. So let me share my screen again and I will bring up, um, let me have a look, I'll bring up a couple of points here. Okay, you can probably see those, uh, see those there. These are taken from the paper that I've just referred to. Let me just uh, briefly, uh, briefly state them in this sense. So to conclude, I have a number of points. First of all, um, there's going to be a shift from motorized transport to walking. This is already happening in some sense. And there's a shift, in fact, uh, not only to walking, but, to, uh, but also to a particular type of motorized transport, to the individual passenger transport, to the car in this sense, which implies both of this shift to walking and shift to individual passenger transport, uh, that mass transit will decline. For example, on the London um, subway and uh, railways basically serving London, um, about 40% uh, of people traveling are using those railways. We're now down to something like only, uh, only um, less than 15% of the people who usually use them are actually traveling on them at the present time. Uh, my third point is that an increasing number of us will be in, begin to work from home in a fashion not necessarily exclusively all from home, basically, but the internet as sort of, a, and uh, the whole kind of uh, web-based culture um, has really ju emerged just in time, you might say, uh, to deal with this pandemic. And this has seen a, a reconfiguration of the home and the workplace. Uh, there's always a trade-off. My fourth point and fifth points are really trade-offs between where we work, where we shop, uh, where we locate, uh, and the online world is uh, rapidly encroaching in this sense, if not already here. Uh, the shift to substantially working at home, we have to figure out what that actually means in terms of other activities that we relate to, such as healthcare, entertainment, shopping, and so on. Uh, and uh, the last couple of points I make really about the future shape of cities. Now, ultimately, by the end of this century, everybody will be uh, living and working in cities in this sense. There's no real, no question about that. Certainly 95%. Uh, at the moment, it's about 55 towards 60%, I think, of the world's population work in, live in cities. Most of those will not be big cities like London. They'll be cities everywhere, cities of different sizes. We may well see a return to 
um, a return to smaller cities, small town living in some sense, which is as much due to the fact that the quality of life in those small cities is probably better in some sense, uh, as well as the impact of the virus, the density um, and distance traveled and so on is a good deal less in those cities. Uh, my last couple of points really relate to the longevity of the virus. Um, how long will this last? Uh, will it be a one-off in some sense? Will we return to uh, the existing normal in a sense and that everything I've been saying in this talk uh, uh, really will not come to pass in some sense, that we'll revert to the same time? We simply don't know, but I do think it's important that um, uh, we note that some of these issues, uh, such as social distancing, uh, keeping away from one another, lowering densities and so on, are also uh, a feature of what's been happening in cities anyway, in that sense, certainly the shift to uh, other modes of transport. I'll stop at that point and um, uh, obviously uh, uh, you'll be able to look at this video either alongside um, or, or afterwards the, uh, the conference and I'll make a number of these points at the conference. Okay, now I'm going to shop st uh, sh uh, stop sharing and so on. In fact, let me just show you one last thing before I finish. Let me change the background. I originally, what it actually looks like, the, um, uh, the actual place that, uh, uh, that, that where we are, which is you can see the Bank of England uh, there and then the Royal Exchange, and you can see this wall of skyscrapers behind, so to some extent. So that gives you an idea that uh, although the sketch is a, a little bit nicer in some sense, I think, than the, uh, than the picture behind, this does show you that we are in the sort of heart of a world city, uh, really at the core of London in the city of London. Okay, thank you very much in that sense. And um, uh, I hope that uh, the, the conference goes well.